Good morning Year 5, I hope you and your families are well. We are on a Monday the 27th of April, I'm getting quite a way through this book now, we're doing quite well with that. And um, we're doing chapter 10 today, and I do have to say probably the next couple of chapters are probably where this book is probably kind of the darkest kind of um, chapters. So it is a reminder that this is mostly for um, Year 5, so if you are um, Years 3 and 4 that are kind of just tuning in to listen and just to have a story read to you it's fine but I would prefer kind of you have a parent look through these chapters first anyway if you are in year threes and four um as it's not too bad but it's just slightly some of the themes in here are for slightly more mature readers but we'll see how it goes so um also uh it's your first Day today of using Google Classroom so I hope that's all working uh, relatively well but please obviously uh, email us if you have any um, issues or questions regarding Google Classroom but yeah I'm gonna read you chapter 10 Ta chapter 10 that's a great start so chapter 10 bones they were going to dig up bones I'm not sure this is a good idea Pavana said to Stusia the next morning she had her blanket and her father's writing things with her. She hadn't been able to tell her mother about going bone digging, so she didn't have a reason to leave her usual work things behind. I'm glad you brought the blanket. We can use it to haul the bones away. Shuzi ignored Pavana's objections. Come on, we'd better hurry or we'll get left behind. Getting left behind did not sound so terrible to Pavana. But with a quick look across to the market to the painted-in window with her secret friend, she obediently fell in behind Shuzia as they ran to catch up with the group. The sky was dark with clouds. They walked for almost an hour, down streets Pavana didn't recognise, until they came to one of the areas of Kabul most heavily destroyed by rockets. There wasn't a single intact building in the whole area, just piles of bricks, dust, and rubble. Bombs had fallen on the cemetery too. The explosions had shaken up the graves in the ground. Here and there, white bones of long dead of the long dead stuck up out of the rusty brown earth. Flocks of large black and grey crows cawed and pecked at the ground around the ruined graves of the newer section of the graveyard. The slight breeze carried a rotting stench to where Pavana and Shuzio were standing on the edge of the cemetery's older section. They watched the boys fan out across the graveyard and started digging. Pavana noticed a man setting up a large weigh scale next to the partially destroyed wall of the building. Who's that? That's the bone broker. He buys the bones from us. What does he do with them? Why would anyone want to buy bones? What do we care? So long as we get paid. Susie so handed Pavana one of the rough boards she had brought along to use as a shovel. Come on, let's get busy. They walked over to the nearest grave. What if, what if there's still a body there? Pavana began. I mean, what if it's not bones yet? We'll find ones with the bones sticking out of it. They walked along for a moment. Sorry, they walked along for a moment looking. It didn't take long. Spread the blanket out, Shuzia directed. We'll pile the bones into it, then make a bundle out of it. Pavana spread the blanket, wishing she were back in the market, sitting under the window where her secret friend lived. The two girls looked at each other, each hoping the other would make the first move. We're here to make money, right? Shuzia said. Pavana nodded. Then let's make some money. She grabbed hold of the bone that was sticking out of the ground and pulled. It came out of the dirt as if it were a carrot being pulled up from a garden. Shuzia tossed it onto the blanket. Not willing to let Shuzia get any get the sorry, not willing to let Shuzia get the better of her, Pavana took up her board and started scraping away the soil. The bombs had done much of the work for them. Many bones were barely covered by dirt and were easy to get at. Do you think they mind us doing this? Pavana asked. Who? The people who are buried here. Do you think they mind us digging them up? Shuzia leaned on her board. Depends on the type of people they were. If they were nasty, stingy people, they wouldn't like it. If they were kind and generous people, they wouldn't mind. 
Would you mind? Shuzia looked at her, opened her mouth to speak, then closed it again and returned to her digging. Pavana didn't ask her again. A few minutes later, Pavana unearthed the skull. Hey, look at this. She used the board to loosen the ground around it, then dug the rest of it up with her fingers so she wouldn't break it. She held it up to Shuzia as though it were a t trophy. It's grinning. Of course it's grinning. He's glad to be out in the sunshine after being in the dark ground for so long. Aren't you glad, Mr. Skull? She made the skull nod. See, I told you. Prop him up on the gravestone. He'll be our mascot. Pavana placed him carefully on the broken headstone. He'll be like our boss, watching us to make sure we do it right. They cleaned out the first grave and moved on to the next, taking Mr. Skull with them. He was joined in a little while, sorry, he was joined in a little while by another skull. By the time their blanket was full of bones, there were five skulls perched in a row, grinning down at the girls. I have to go to the bathroom, Pavana said. What am I going to do? I have to go too, Shuzia looked round. There's a doorway over there, she said, pointing to a nearby ruined building. You go first, I'll keep watch. Over me? Over our bones. Should I go right out here? No one is paying attention to you. It's either that or hold it. Pavana nodded and put down her board shovel. She'd been holding it for a while already, checking to make sure no one was looking. She headed over to the sheltered doorway. Hey, Kasim. Pavana looked back at her friend. Watch out for landmines, Shuzia said. Then she grinned. Pavana grinned back. Shuzia was probably joking, but she kept her eyes open anyway. Kabul has more landmines than flowers, her father used to say. Landmines are as common as rocks and can blow you up without warning. Remember your brother. Pavana, rem Pavana remembered the time someone from the United Nations had come to her class with a chart showing the different kinds of landmines. She tried to remember what they all looked like. All she could remember was that some were disguised as toys, special mines to blow up children. Pavana peered into the darkness of the doorway. Sometimes armies would plant mines in buildings as they left an area. Could someone have planted a landmine there? Would she blow up if she stepped inside? She knew she was faced with three choices. One was to not go to the bathroom until she got home. That was not possible. She really couldn't hold it much longer. Another choice was to go to the bathroom outside the doorway where people might see her and figure out she was a girl. Third was to step into the darkness, go to the bathroom in private and hope she didn't explode. She picked the third choice. Taking a deep breath and uttering a quick prayer, she stepped through the doorway. She didn't explode. No landmines, Shuzia asked when Pavana returned. I kicked them out of the way, Pavana joked, but she was still shaking. When Shuzia came back from her trip to the doorway, they made a bundle of the bones in the blanket with the skulls thrown in and carried it together over the bone broker with it, um, over to the bone broker in scales. He had to fill the bucket on the scales three times to accommodate all their bones. He added up the weight, named an amount and counted up the money. Pavana and Shuzia didn't say anything until they were well away from the bone broker's stool. They were afraid he might have made a mistake and given them too much. This is as much as I made in the last three day. Sorry, in the. This is as much as I made in three days last week. Pavana said, "I told you we'd make money." Shuzia said, and she handed half the cash to Pavana. Shall we keep? Shall we keep quiet for the day or keep digging? Keep digging, of course. Mother expected her for lunch, but she'd think of something to tell her. In the middle of the afternoon, there was a small break in the clouds. A stream of bright sunlight hit the graveyard. Pavana gave Shuzia a nudge and they looked out over the mounds of dug up graves at the boys sweaty and smudged with dirt, at the pile of bones beside them gleaming white in the sudden sunshine. We have to remember this, Pavana said. When things get better and we grow up, we have to remember that there was a day when we were kids and we stood in a graveyard and dug up bones to sell so that our families could eat. Will anyone ever believe us? No, but we will know it happened. 
when we're rich old ladies, we'll drink tea and talk about this day. The girls leaned on their board shovels watching the other children work. Then the sun went back in and they got back to work themselves. They filled their blanket again before stopping for the day. If we turn all this money over to our families, they'll think they'll find things to spend it on and we'll never get our trays, Shulzia said. I think we should keep some back, not turn in it all to over to them. Are you going to tell your family what we were doing today? No, Shuzia said. Neither will I, Pavana said. I'm just going to turn over the regular amount, maybe a little more. I'll tell them someday, but not just now. They parted, arranging to meet again early the next morning for another day of bone digging. Before going home, Pavana went to the water tap. Her clothes were dirty. She washed them off as best she could while they were still on her. She took the money out of her pockets and divided it in two. She put them back on... Sorry, some she put in her pocket to give to her mother. The rest she hid in the bottom of her shoulder bag next to her father's writing paper. Finally, she stuck her whole head under the tap, hoping the cold water would wash the images of what she had done all day out of her head. But every time she closed her eyes, she saw Mr Skull and his companions lined up on the gravestones, grinning at her. And that's the end of chapter 10. So as I say, it's slightly darker than the um, kind of the rest of the book, this. Um, and obviously, if you do have any other concerns or questions regarding anything that we read in the book, you're more than welcome at any time to send myself and Miss Collier emails across and we can kind of answer any questions you've got. Um, I suppose at this point, I just want to kind of keep in mind to you that this is um, this is a fiction story. So the events that have happened in this aren't um, exactly what has happened to someone because it is a fiction story. However, there are probably elements of this which have been taken from um, kind of a real stories and real situations around the world. And that's why we just thought it's kind of quite important that we keep going with this book with you um and making sure that we do finish this book just because it is so kind of different to the other books that you will be um experienced with at Ravenstone or that you might even choose to read on your own um but yeah um go on to google classroom today and have a look at the tasks that you have there and as i say as always you're welcome to message miss collier and us and myself with any questions or anything you have and i will see you tomorrow <laughs>